Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're in Southwest Texas and we're gonna do something that's never been done before, hopefully, and that something is to take a white-tailed deer with the new 224 Valkyrie from Federal Ammunition. I am the guests of both Federal and Mossy Oak. They have brought me out here to do this and I'm really excited, guys, to give this a crack and see how well this 224 Valkyrie performs. Now, what is the 224 Valkyrie? If you haven't already read about it, let me tell you a little bit about the cartridge. The cartridge is a neck down 6.8 SPC. It's neck down to 22 caliber, has the exact same bore diameter as a standard 5.56. The cartridges that we have out here this week are 290 grain offerings. One is a match offering, the gold medal match, and then the other is a fusion offering, and again, they're both 90 grain. The fusion is a hunting cartridge, and that's what we're gonna use to take some deer this week. The beautiful thing about the 224 Valkyrie is it gives you wind resistance and, and the range of a caliber like 6.5 Creedmoor, but the cost is much lower. So a standard box of American Eagle, which I don't have with me, this is some of the match ammunition, but the American Eagle will have a, a 90 or 100 grain bullet, I'm not sure which, but it will retail for just a little over $13, probably by the time it gets to your dealer's shelf, about $12, $12.50 per 20 rounds. Now that makes it roughly half the price of more uh, expensive cartridges like the 6.5 Creedmoor for those of you that don't reload, like myself. So you have a thousand yard capability, you have bullet drop of about 28 feet at a thousand yards with a 90 grain projectile and a BC of .563. That makes it a very interesting cartridge and because of its short overall length, the fact that it works in a standard 6.8 magazine, we've also successfully used it uh, with followers for 6.5 Grindle. The fact that it's a, a small cartridge and it fits in a standard AR-15 magazine means you can run it in a short action rifle like an AR-15 or a short action bolt action rifle. So what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna get this rifle sighted in and have a little bit of fun with it and then we're gonna head out into the field and see if we can't get a buck in the dough because I have a stamp for both. the same hole. All right guys, looking like about a one MOA rifle. So I would say that the gun's zeroed out and ready to shoot, probably take some deer with it. So uh, we're gonna get ready to head out a little later this afternoon and see if we can't get ourselves a buck. Should be a lot of fun. We jumped into the truck and our guide, Ben, drove us over to our blind. Go with babies. Once we got into the blind, I started glassing for that perfect white-tailed buck to be harvested with the new 224 Valkyrie. After a while, a nice eight point came in and we watched and waited for the buck to present a clear shot to us. Let's go ahead and get ready and take that out. I'm getting there. I wanted to turn around and face that way. But as he was walking away, another eight point moved in. This buck seemed to be a little bit larger and had much more character than the first buck. This was definitely the buck I wanted to take. Here, 
This buck seemed to mingle and work his way around the does as if he knew to use them as cover. After a while of watching and waiting, the buck slowly worked his way out from cover behind the does, giving me the clear shot that I needed. He was 65 yards away when I hit him with the first round. when you know they're hit good when they jump and back legs kick out fold out i mean i could see i could see the impact through my glasses could you? Yeah, yeah absolutely and he started coming up and you put another one in him and that was all he rode i think he yeah, crashed, he right, crashed right in front of the ship man i'm telling you i wasn't gonna let him get to the wood line he made us work for it didn't he you did man he didn't want to give it up easy no he wasn't gonna make us work for it. he kept Blading towards us and blading away from us, a doe would come in, like, okay, come on. Oh, it was, Grand, <laughs> it was Grand Central Station down there for a little bit. You know, everybody was mixed up. We just had to wait. You waited for a good shot and waited for our backdrop to be clear. Yeah. And uh, you put it on him, man. Great job, you, brother. Great job. Thank you, man. Awesome hunt. Let's, Let's go see stuff. your deer. Let's go check him out. All man. right. There he is. Look at that guy. Holy cow. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that kicker right there. Man, what a gorgeous rack. Look how that comes in. Nice Almost a palmated G2 right here. Great job, Brother. buddy. Congratulations. Amazing. Man. Outstanding. What a good looking He's healthy animal that is. I'm telling you, he is healthy. He is healthy. He made us work for it a little bit. He certainly did. We uh, we saw that first buck walk in. I was impressed with him. And then, well, I think, uh, I think when this guy walked in, there was no doubt in your mind he was the one That's you wanted That's the one I take. wanted. I looked yeah. at you and I'm like, can I have him? You're like, Absolutely, let's do it, man. What a great deer. Great job. Thank you so much, man. What an awesome hunt. Well, what do you say we, uh, let's go get the vehicle and put him in there and go show the guys. Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Show off that kicker. Healthy, healthy, healthy deer. Back of his hocks are all wet. Yep. That's good. I'm At least he had, he had a good time before he died. We, we had an eight. We had a good straight so eight up there. And this deer come in from the back, Tim turned around and looked at me and he had his hearing, hearing protection and he goes, ooh. And so I, I like, took that as meaning, can I shoot that one? And I said, it's a shooter, go ahead, brother. So we had to wait for him, he milled around. It was like Grand Central Station down there. We had does coming in. We had to wait for a clear background. And wait, when, so when we got it, he dropped it. I mean, well, it? wait till you see how that is thing. It's an eight Come with on. a kicker on the G2. Right. Makes it a nine. Woo. Just put your finger right there and push. Front it blew that shoulder there? up, dude. Oh, really? Is it me? Is, there was well, an accident in there or is it? It didn't exit. Still in there. So still, still in there. Still in there. Oh. Awesome. There's two of them in there. And, and oh, nice. So he, he hit him. Look at this. And that sucker folded up. It that broke. Awesome? It broke his leg. <laughs> really? Right. And he starts running straight at us. Uh huh. And I'm like, I'm not gonna let that bastard get in those trees. It's getting dark. I hit. I hit him again. So there's Sweet. two holes right in the front, and he just went Sweet. face down in the dirt, man. Awesome. He was done. He plowed in. He's gorgeous. Isn't that awesome? Very. Good. Well, he was trying to run us out of daylight, but him. Oh, you got. It looks like he's. It's pretty close. Nice color. Oh, oh yeah, he's, he's super healthy. He's make a gorgeous mount. And we get to get some bullets out of him. Good job, man. Yeah, we got, we got to get the bullets out of him, see what they did, because everybody's going to want to know. All right, so let's take a look at what that 90 grain fusion bullet did. Now, the first shot did kill the deer. The first shot went through, blew out the right shoulder, uh, went across the entire chest cavity, got both lungs and took the top of the heart out, and then went across the chest and parked itself on the other side of the ribs. It did a pretty nasty job breaking the ribs on its way out. And we can see that shot came in right here. From the, from the video, you guys will see that shot come in here. I could, in my mind's eye, I, I was aiming for the heart. It came in here, blew out this shoulder. The shoulder's a mess. Uh, he lost the use of this leg. You'll see him not able to run. Came across that chest and across the top of the heart, lungs, and that bullet came to rest right here. 
all right? Just under the hide. But look at what the damage it did to the rib cage. Now, as the deer was running towards us, I hit him again because I had a clean shot. That round hit him right here again, blew out this shoulder, this leg's broken as well. So now he lost the use of both front legs. That's why I see him kind of kicking the hind legs and pushing his face into the dirt. And then you can see that entrance wound down there. It's pretty nasty. And we're guessing that bullet came to rest somewhere in the, in the guts. We will, uh, we will go back to the gut pile in the morning and see if we can find that bullet. There's no guarantee that we will, but we did get that first bullet, the kill shot bullet out. And that bullet, you know, it's a 90 grain fusion bullet. It mushroomed nicely out. Uh, it looks like it kept pretty much it's all of its weight. Uh, we'll weigh that bullet and see what it weighs, but that bullet certainly did the trick on this buck. Since this is a new caliber, I was curious how well the Federal 90 grain fusion performed. I was able to recover one of the two rounds to hit the buck. That's one of them. That's at 224. After getting back to camp, I was able to weigh the recovered bullet and it tipped the scale right at 67 grains. Next, I wanted to see what the expansion of the bullet was. According to my Lyman Digital dial calipers, at its widest, the recovered bullet was right at one half of an inch. In my opinion, the bullet gave better than expected performance and I feel it's more than capable of taking Texas white-tailed deer at least out to 150 yards if not a bit further. This is the first time you guys have ever seen me wearing Mossy Oak camouflage. Now, you guys tell me what you think in terms of how well it's working. This is called Breakup Country, and what the guys from Mossy Oak tell me is that uh, independent firm has done a study and declared this the most popular camouflage pattern in the United States. Now, I will say, I've seen my fair share of this pattern being worn by hunters even up in Northwest Indiana, where we're from. You can see how it blends in here in the Southwest Texas scrub brush. I'll let you guys be the judge. Uh, we have this Nomad gear with the mossy oak pattern on it. This is light, uh, like a combat shirt, very lightweight. It's kind of warm this afternoon, but I have this uh, jacket on as well. Something else that they brought out for us to see is this new Eclipse camo pattern. And you're probably wondering, as I was when I first saw it, what it's for. What this is for is for ground blind hunting. So when you're looking inside of a ground blind, you'll notice it's darker, you're in the shadows, and that's what this is for. So if you plan on being in a ground blind, you might wanna check out the new Eclipse camo pattern from Mossy Oak. I'm here with Ben, and Ben is involved in the conservation and herd management here at the ranch, but he also guides, and he guided me on my buck hunt, on my first hunt here, when I first arrived here in uh, Southwest Texas. And Ben, if you could tell us a little bit about what it means to really manage a herd. Now, I know we're on a 10,000 acre, free range ranch. It's a low fence ranch. The deer easily bound the fences and move around. It's also a working ranch with cattle and other animals. But what does it mean to manage a herd of deer? And what and, and what's the purpose of it? And, and how does that benefit the animals? Sure, sure. Well, like I said, we are 10,000 acre low fence ranch, free range. We don't bring any outside genetics in. These are all native deer that we've managed that have turned into a really nice herd. And so managing, there's a couple of aspects to management that we can talk about, but let's talk about genetics for a second. So when we genetically manage the herd, we'll go through and there's, on a male deer, on a buck, we have visual indicators, mm -hmm. horns. Right. So we can get a very good idea of the genetic makeup of that buck. So we know exactly what's inside of him. We know, you know, if he's a desirable animal, maybe he's undesirable for one or more reasons, and we'll be able to either leave him in our herd or take him, harvest him. And so we know we can tell by the horns what kind of genetics our bucks have. But when we talk about the female of the species, the doe, you know, she's responsible for a large majority of the genetic makeup of the fawn, a bigger majority than the buck is. So there's no visual indicators on a doe, whether she's of a desirable genetic makeup or not. So the only thing that we can do with our does is manage through the herd, manage old does, middle-aged does, and even some young does. And uh, by doing that, we'll roll the actual doe population over, and we know that our buck population is getting better mm -hmm. because we can see the improvements year after year through the visual indicators, which are the horns. That's interesting. So when you talk about the horns, guys, and also it's not just um, desirable genetics, we're talking about the health of the animals overall. So if they have good genetics, they're overall healthier animals. That's very correct. And, and so 
uh, what they're trying to do here is make a healthier herd of animals and it improves the species as a whole just here on the ranch and of course any other animals that may come across the low fences or whatever. But, um, but also when you guys talk about harvesting the animals, it's important to note that when they take the animals, nothing really goes to waste. They, they take the meat, uh, they bring in hunters like myself. Uh, of course, I'm taking some of the meat home, but there are you know, local charities and things like that. When uh, you take the animals, if somebody at the ranch doesn't want the meat, Charities certainly, benefit from certainly. That we, we, we're, we're involved, you know, we'll, we'll donate to Hunters for the Hungry. Also, we, uh, we keep a lot of these deer local in the local towns. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of families that, that can use the meat and are very appreciative to have yeah. the meat. So that's a, that's a very important thing mm -hmm. for us is that when we take that animal, that we honor the animal mm -hmm. by, by, by using the meat, using every, every resource that, 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 that's inside that harvested animal that's usable, we want to go to use because we feel like that's honoring the animal. And yeah. it's very important. We have, we have a very, very high passion for our herd and the deer in it, and we do care about them deeply. And so that, that just kind of, it, it, it makes everything complete when we're able to donate that meat or give it to a family that can really use it. And I can attest to how much they care about the herd here because I, I know the ranch owner when we come back in, uh, he wants to know all about the hunt and he wants to have a humane harvest of the animals. Uh, and if, if something goes wrong, uh, they have the ability to bring in dogs to track an animal that may be wounded so they can quickly put that animal out of its misery. So really everything you do here, everything I've seen here has been quite impressive and I can't say that I've seen an operation quite like this before. Well, thank you. We really appreciate that and we, we strive for that. Um, we, we really work hard and there's, there is a lot of work all year long that goes into this operation. It's, you know, it's not just show up and harvest the animals. You know, we're out, we're filling feeders, you know, we're feeding supplement feed protein year round so that our animals, you know, don't go hungry. You know, and, and when we talked earlier a little bit about management, you know, we can also talk about the population control aspect of that. Um, and, and as far as where, where conservation is concerned, you know, we do fly every year and we do an annual survey so that we have a hard number of deer in our herd. We can know within a few deer, how many deer are in our herd. So we can manage from that hard number and look at things like, almanacs and indicators, you know, and try to get ahead of any drought cycle that's coming because that's very important too. What happens during our dry, drought cycles here in Southwest Texas is everything gets very dry, arid. There won't be a lot of food on the ground for the animals. So, it, and even the amount of supplemental feed that we put out there, which we probably feed 70 to 80 tons of supplemental protein a year. Wow. Um, it can be not enough in those situations. So we want to manage our numbers in the event that if we do get into a drought situation, we don't have a large die off from starvation. Which is a horrible death. A abs I would imagine so, absolutely. Yeah, so this is really, really neat guys to see uh, in operation, to see how it works, to see a ranch this size up in Northwest Indiana. Obviously we don't have this much property, we do, but it's, it's parceled out in much smaller segments. Uh, that's one of the things I really love about Texas is just how sprawling these ranches are. And like I said earlier, I've never seen an operation quite like this, so it's very interesting to see how um, how much passion goes into it. And you have to have passion because it's not inexpensive to do. Right. So um, it, it's well past hobby stages, and, and this is just really something that's important overall for the deer in general here in Southwest Texas. Right, and it, it, is, it is truly all about our herd here. The next morning, my host from Federal, JJ, went out to harvest the second buck to be taken with the new 224 Valkyrie. JJ and the guide waited most of the morning until a mature buck came into sight. Their patience paid off as a beautiful buck stepped out at 140 yards. A single well-placed shot brought the buck down.
watch it through the binos. Look at those G2s, JJ. That is fantastic. Those guys gotta Whoa, be 11 look inches. Look at that. I didn't know, I didn't realize that. I didn't see. Can't even get a fist almost, between there. Almost touching there. How cool is that? That is awesome. Great job, Thank you. bud. Thanks, man. This is fantastic. Beautiful animal. He's healthy. Was. <laughs> look at that. Yep. A little 224 Valkyrie put it on him. Is that the 100 is. grain fusion round? Nope, this is the 90 grain fusion round. 90 grain. 90 grains. He's got a really nice character. I love this. I love the head, the dark hair on the head. Look at those G2s. I mean, they've got to be 11 inches long. That's awesome. That is awesome. Great deer, JJ. Thanks a lot, Great man. shot, bud. Thank you. Thank you. The rifle that we're using out here this week is a LaRue Tactical AR-15, and I know he's made some off-color comments recently uh, about bump fire stocks on the internet, but this is the only rifle that Federal had available to him at the time when we came out here to do this hunt. Now, I will say that this rifle is performing very well, and uh, it, it actually shoots extremely well and is extremely accurate. The scope that we have on here is a new offering from Bushnell. It's part of their Elite Tactical line, and this is the LRTS. It has the capability of going from three power all the way up to 12 power. You can see it's a nice small profile with locking turrets and a zero stop. It's, it's a really, really nice little scope. Uh, we'll learn more about this scope, I think, at SHOT Show 2018, along with the cartridge, the 224 Valkyrie, which I believe Sammy is gonna release their specs at SHOT Show. And then we're gonna have a number of different manufacturers offering or showing off new rifles chambered in the 224 Valkyrie. <laughs> After JJ came back from taking his buck and his doe, I headed out to fill my doe tag. I was also interested in seeing the performance of the 224 Valkyrie on the smaller does. We got some little spiker bucks sitting out there tonight. We're going for a doe. So we're just getting all ready to get set up here.
was a clean, clean kill, man. Great shot, man. Great shot. Outstanding. Good deer. Get folded her up, man. Oh, yeah. Lights out. Lights out. Wow, that was a clean, clean kill. Let's go down and see what we got. Yeah, perfect. That is a good looking doe. Hit her right where I put where I aimed, right behind the shoulder. And we'll see if it came through on the other side. She's it put her down. That was about as clean a kill as you could ever want to have. Yeah. Good looking deer. So that 90 grain fusion bullet hit her just behind the shoulder blade. She's kind of quartered away from me. Hit her just behind the shoulder blade on the right side, came through the vitals and exited the shoulder right here. And there's a big, pretty good size exit wound. And as you guys could see, it was a nice clean harvest on this doe. So I'd say that 224 is a poison pill on these Texas deer. We flipped her over to take a look at the entrance wound and it's just a pinhole. So you can see a little bit of blood right there. But when we start looking, just a little tiny pinhole going in. You can see it's right behind her shoulder blade. Here's her shoulder blade. And then it came out, a through and through shot on the other side. Hope you guys enjoyed coming down to Southwest Texas with us and taking some deer for the very first time with the new 224 Valkyrie. These whitetail down here in, in Southwest Texas are a little bit smaller than the deer we have up north, but I tell you what, the hunting down here is outstanding. Guys, I wanna thank the folks over at Federal and Mossy Oak for bringing us out here and allowing us to take the very first whitetail deer ever taken with the new 224 Valkyrie cartridge. I think you guys will agree that the Valkyrie is a promising cartridge. It looks like it's gonna be a really good long range cartridge out to a thousand yards or so. It stays, stays supersonic with these 90 grain rounds. Looks like we have about 28 feet of drop at a thousand yards, which is really good. It's even better than 308 and other 556 calibers. And also it looks like it's going to be a great predator cartridge. It's going to be a great varminting cartridge. And again, an affordable target shooting cartridge out of a short action rifle, like a standard AR-15 or a short action bolt action rifle. If you guys would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to swing by and become a Patreon supporter. Over at Patreon, we try to give stuff back to those that support us directly here at the channel. YouTube has demonetized us, and so we've moved over to Patreon, and our viewers now support us directly. But we try to give some stuff back. Some of the stuff that we do for squad leaders above is we give you regular access to discounted items over the Copper Custom website. But our team leaders even get access to special discount codes that we'll publish every once in a while, usually several times a month, where you can pick up optics and firearms and all sorts of accessories at really, really heavily discounted prices, prices that grossly violate MAP. And again, that's just something we like to do to thank you guys for directly supporting us here at, at Patreon. But also, we do other things. Our friends over at Freedom Munitions give us $300 in ammunition to give away every single month. So we pick three lucky Patreons and we give away $100 in ammunition to each of those three Patreons. And again, that's every single month. Also, the folks over at Forged from Freedom who make the shirt that I'm wearing right now, we have a whole bunch of different shirts over there. There's a link down below, but they give away five t-shirts every month to five different Patreons. Now we do keep track of who wins what, so you can't win the same thing twice. So we try to spread that around to everybody. So guys, if you'd like to support us, please swing by and support us over at Patreon, but not just us. There are other channels out there that could use your support as well. So if you have a content creator you regularly watch, please swing by and see if they have a Patreon page and consider supporting them as well. Also, please swing by and check us out over at Copper Custom. We have a lot of great products at great prices. Guys, I wanna thank you for all those years of support. Thank you for watching the channel. We'll talk to you guys soon.